it's time for a show-stopping cream pie, a banoffee pie. So picture pretty whipped cream on top of a rich, creamy toffee filling that's hiding fresh bananas and underneath a beautiful pastry crust. And that's where I'm going to start because this crust is something special. Now, you could do a crumb crust made of digestive cookies, but I'm actually making the digestive cookies from scratch. I'll start with a cup of whole wheat flour. And I wanna grind that with my flaked oats. When I bake with oats, I always use regular, not instant or quick cook. One of the things I like about digestive cookies is they're not over the top sweet. I'm leaving the toffee filling for the sweetness. So I only need a quarter cup of light brown sugar. I'll add half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and then I'll pulse this together to grind the oats and the flour. I've got three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter. I cut it into pieces, but I kept it in the fridge to keep it nice and cold. When you're making cookie doughs in the food processor, the friction of the blade can warm up your butter very quickly. Now I'll pulse this. All right. It's crumbly and I can't see any visible pieces of butter, so now I'm ready to add my single egg. And I'll pulse again until the dough comes together. There we go, how easy is that? Now because the butter got softened when I worked the dough, I need to let it chill. Give it about two hours. Of course, this is one of those doughs you can make ahead and freeze. And once chilled, here it is nicely firmed and ready to roll. Lightly flour your work surface. I'm rolling the dough out to just about a quarter inch thick. I've got a removable bottom tart tin, nine inches across. I'll lift the dough in, press it into the fluted edges. Give it a quick roll to trim it off. Now before I bake this shell, I have to chill it down. Just half an hour, but that sets the butter again and ensures the crust will stay in place. A tart shell like this should always be baked on a baking tray. And before it goes in the oven, I dock it with a fork. That allows for expansion as the tart bakes and you won't get any bubbles. I've set my oven to 325, and this takes 20 to 25 minutes. And here is the cooled crust out of the oven. Before I can start on that toffee filling, I want to get ready with the bananas. The filling of banoffee pie is made of two parts, banana and toffee. Get it? Banoffee. When I make banana bread, I like to use really ripe bananas, but when I'm filling a banoffee pie, I like them to be just ripe enough that they peel easily, but they hold their shape. And I slice my bananas quite thickly more than half an inch thick. You wanna make sure there's enough banana in every bite. And then you arrange this so that the bananas are really close together inside the tart shell. Banoffee pie was created in England, and actually the first time I tried it was when I went to go visit a friend of mine in London, and I was hooked. I loved it, and I immediately had to go home and start playing with the recipe. Now, I've got my tart shell baked, I've got the bananas lining my shell, so the next two things to make, the toffee, and of course, the whipped cream topping. It's not a cream pie unless you've got the whipped cream. I've 
taking care of the business of the crust and the bananas for my banoffee pie. Now it's time for the goodness, the toffee filling and the whipped cream. So I start the toffee filling by melting together half a cup of butter and half a cup of dark brown sugar. And I am using half a cup of unsalted butter because I will add a little salt after I'm done cooking the toffee filling. So now I can turn my heat on medium high. I grab a whisk and I mix the sugar and butter together until it just starts to bubble. Banoffee pie is part of the cream pie family, but the filling is different. It's not an egg-based custard like my other pies. It's more of like a soft, sliceable toffee. Now that this has started bubbling, I can add my condensed milk, a full tin, so 300 ml. I'll whisk this in, and very important, you don't want to cook this filling more than a minute, otherwise it toughens up the toffee. You'll be picking it out of your teeth at the end of your dinner party. I don't want that for you. Now I've got the bubbles, and it's starting to change color too. Oh, that smells incredible. It's been my one minute. It's amazing how in just one minute, it changes color that much and thickens up. You feel it when you're whisking it. So I'll add my teaspoon of vanilla, my half a teaspoon of salt, give it a little whisk in. And while it's still hot and fluid, I'll take it over to my pie shell with the bananas and pour that toffee filling. Mm, I'm gonna get every bit of that toffee goodness. You wanna make sure you cover the bananas fully with the toffee. That seals them in so they won't turn brown. Now this needs quite some time to cool to room temperature. You don't have to cover it at all. But then once it's cooled, you pop it in the fridge and it just needs an hour to set to make it easy to slice. Here it is set and ready to top with whipped cream because it is a cream pie after all. I'll slide it off my shell. Now I have my whipped cream, one cup of fluid whipping cream that I whipped and then I added my one tablespoon of skim milk powder, two tablespoons of icing sugar and a little vanilla extract. And because this is a fancier style of cream pie, I might as well pipe a little design on there. I'm just going back and forth with my piping bag, doing a little scrolling pattern. Now, the finishing touch, classic to the English banoffee pie, a little sprinkling of sliced almonds that have been lightly toasted. Isn't that absolutely stunning? But you know it looks stunning on the outside. We've gotta see what it looks like on the inside. Feel that toffee as my knife pulls through the tart. You've got the bananas hiding underneath. Oh, how delightful. Mm, mm, mm. It truly is cream pie taken to a whole new level. Mm, 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 mm -hmm. 